Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So if you are a new subscriber to my channel, thank you so much for subscribing. Or if you're popping in on this video, thank you so much for clicking on this video. So really quick, I want to introduce myself. My name is Bridget Spackman. I was a kindergarten teacher for four years in Alabama and I am currently a fourth grade ELA teacher in Pennsylvania. Um, I am a blogger and a YouTuber for The Letter Classroom, so you can check out all of my social media sites using The Letter Classroom and you should be able to find me. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about observations. These big, huge, scary things that everybody starts to get really stressed out about during this time of the year and typically towards like the beginning of the year. So classroom observations, these are times when either an administrator or somebody from your central office will typically come in and they will observe you for an extended period of time. Typically, some will range from 15 to all the way to 45 minutes. And in my district, we have them for 45 minutes. Observations can also be unannounced and also announced, meaning that your administration has the ability to say, hey, I'm gonna be popping into your room during this time, or I'm gonna be coming to see you during your reading time. So just kind of making you aware of when they're going to be coming into your room, but sometimes they're unannounced, meaning that they come in just kind of willy-nilly and they just pop on in and just take a seat and start watching you. So both of these are very scary because they're coming in, they're observing us, we're being critiqued as teachers and a lot of times that can hit us in the soft spot. But this is really an opportunity for you to be able to grow as an educator, to figure out what it is that you're doing correctly and what are some things that you can do to improve yourself. And that's what this is about. You don't wanna almost do like a hoot nanny type, you know, shindig every single time you feel like you're having an observation. You do wanna show your principal or your administration how you are and who you are as a teacher so that they can help you grow. This isn't a time to say, oh, I don't like her. I'm going to just kick her to the, you know, get her out of here for next year. No, they're coming in trying to help you become a better educator. So think of it that way. Don't think of it as them coming in and judging you. Think of it as they're coming in to see some of the great things that I'm doing in my classroom and also to see what are some things that I can also improve on. We always wanna to try to better ourselves. There is not one teacher that is absolutely perfect. We can all become better every single day. So I have 10 tips for you when it comes to observations. And when thinking about these tips, these are not just tips to only consider for observation. To be honest, these are just really good teaching tips. These are just good teaching, things that you can start implementing into your classroom right away. It doesn't require you to create anything at all. And it's just something that shows good teaching. That's all we want to do is good teaching. These are strategies that you can use in your classroom every single day. Start implementing them right away so that you can kind of get yourself into that habit. Some of them may be some things where you may have to put in some conscious efforts to make sure that you're doing every single day. But once you start getting into the practice and into the habit, it becomes just that, a habit. It becomes a habit that you just start doing it every single day during your lessons. And it feels more natural later on. So get that practice in now so that when observation time does come in, you're ready to go and you don't have to kind of stress out about it. So my very first tip for you is to have someone greet your administration or whoever it is that comes into your classroom. Now, this is something that we really try to enforce and get our kids to practice on. We want them to practice greeting adults, giving those firm handshakes, telling them, walking them over, saying, let me show you what it is that I'm doing right now, or let me explain to you what it is that we're doing in our classroom. Someone who you feel like could go up and tell or communicate to that person what it is that's happening into your in your room because this is not a time where you as a teacher can stop your teaching so you want to put it on one of the kids to be able to explain what it is that they're doing so what we do is we have our learners go up to our, our administration or again whoever it is that comes into our room and they will go give them a handshake they will introduce themselves they turn will introduce and then they will start to guide them somewhere and they'll say let me show you what it is that we're doing in our classroom right now and they'll begin to kind of walk them through what everyone is doing and this is something that can be extremely powerful your administration is going to come in they're going to be greeted by you know whatever age group it is and they're going to be extremely impressed because you're you're teaching them important life skills that these students need to know for the rest of their lives Tip number two, and this is something that you can either really have it ready, or again, you can teach a student to show them exactly where they can sit. 
So when my students go up and they greet, typically if I know that my administration is coming in during a certain time, I will have a chair kind of set off to the side. And I will usually either put my lesson plans on that chair for that person who is coming in to observe me, or I'll just put kind of a little name tag. If you don't know that your administration is coming, still you can teach your kids to guide them to wherever it is that you were instructing. So if I know that I'm in a small group area, I'm going to tell my students, hey, you want to have them come sit somewhere close over here so that they can kind of observe. Or you can, you know, if they're in a whole group, you can show them exactly where to sit or they can come and sit with you. So having your students actually guide them to where to sit or if you have a, a chair already ready, if you do know when they are coming, you can have those lesson plans set right there for them ready to go so that they can already kind of look at them and catch up to where you're, what it is that you're doing in your group. Tip number three, and this is not really good teaching, <laughs> but this helps me as a teacher and is don't look up. Don't look up at your administration. Don't look up and say hi. Don't look up and make eye contact. Ignore them. Completely ignore them. Put your mind and body in the moment of what's happening in front of you. Put it in those kids because those kids are the ones that they're, they're the most important at that time. Your administration does not matter when they walk into that room. Your kids are the only things that, that should matter to you. So keep your mind and body on your kids and don't look up. I feel like what that does is it takes away the nerves. You're not as nervous anymore. You have a, you can still relax and if you focus on them, you're not worried about what's what your administration is doing, their facial expressions, what they're writing down because you're so busy focusing on your kids that you're in that moment. Teachers, like we all know, we get into the moment and we get started teaching and we're good to go. But if you're so busy worrying about what else somebody else is like saying or their facial expressions or what they're doing, you're going to end up stressing yourself out and you're going to miss a beat. Tip number four. This is really good teaching. Um, I feel like this is something that us as all as teachers really need to be very conscientious of whenever we are planning our lessons. And that is to create a very well scaffolded lesson. So typically what I will do is I will plan out for the entire week or I'll plan a, an entire lesson, let's say, by skill. And that's kind of how I do it in the upper grades. In the lower grades, it would have looked a little bit different. But in the upper grades, I plan it by skill. And I say, you know what, if to this week, I really wanna focus on um, text dependent analysis. Well, then that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a lesson that is scaffolded where I'm doing the modeling. I kind of give them some of that. We're going to do it together as a group. And then I'm going to slowly scaffold them using different passages to give them multiple opportunities to be able to apply the skill that we're learning. So I plan out for the entire thing. And then what that does is then when they come in, they're starting to see that, oh, the kids are actually getting it. Guys, if you scaffold your lesson, your kids are really going to understand it. They're going to understand what you're doing because you're, you're really supporting everything that you're teaching. You're supporting them as learners as well. You're setting them up for success by scaffolding out a lesson. So one of the things that I have to kind of really kind of give kudos to my partner teacher is that she has a quote and the quote is, you can't plan for tomorrow until you know what your kids can do today. And that is so true. So you really want to make sure that you're scaffolding them and you don't want to push them too hard. Guys, sometimes we have to throw our lessons out the window because sometimes those lessons don't work and we have to kind of pull it back a little bit and make sure that our kids are understanding what it is that they're doing. So planning it out based on that skill and really making sure that you're setting your kids up for success and you're giving them plenty of opportunities and scaffolding those that, that skill itself will really benefit you whenever you're sitting down with your principal and they're saying, well, tell me about your lesson. And you can tell them all of the different steps that you're doing in order to help your kids be successful. Tip number five is to give plenty of opportunities for your kids to interact. Your principal or administration does not want to come into this room and see that you are the only person that is talking. Give plenty of opportunities for your kids to talk. This is where you're allowing them to partner talk. You're allowing them to work in little groups. You're allowing them to turn and talk before they answer. You're allowing them to have that thinking time and that wait time and then being able to share it and then having them give you the answer. Typically, if it's a question that does not have a right there type of answer. So if I said, what color is my wall? And they said blue, like that's a right there kind of question. That's something that they should be, you don't need to give partner talk for that. But if it's a question where you want them to have 
every answer is gonna be a little bit differentiated or you wanna kind of give them that support, again, that scaffolding, that support of being able to learn from another student, that's that opportunity where you wanna give them that, uh, that partner talk. So have your kids interact. Your principal, again, just doesn't wanna see you talk the entire time. They wanna know what the kids are getting from it. They wanna see the kids talking and inter interacting with each other about the content that they, lear they are learning about. Tip number six kind of goes along with tip number five, but you want the kids to have discussions. And again, this is something that you can already start implementing into your classroom right away, but you don't want to be the only one that's up there talking. Have your kids stand up. Get them into the habit of standing up and really explaining themselves and saying, well, this is what I believed and this is how I believed this and being able to, um, you know, have those discussions with one another and be able to share their thinking with one another and say, you know, Johnny, how did you get to that answer? Why did you think that it was this? Have them stand up and have that discussion and being able to kind of explain their thought process and then have other kids be able to learn how to comment. This is not something that is easy, um, having kids be able to comment onto what other kids are doing, but I promise you the more and more you do it and the more and more you practice it, it is extremely powerful and your principal will be extremely impressed with what it is that you are doing with your children. Tip number seven is, again, it goes along with five and six. Ask some of those higher level thinking questions. Guys, higher level, always, always, always. Think about the hows and the whys. Always ask, well, how did you know that? Well, why do you believe that this is happening? Instead of asking those right there type of questions, stick to the hows and the whys because that is higher level thinking and that is where we're wanting our kids to go. We're wanting them to think higher level and stop thinking so basic all of the time. So focus on some of those higher level thinking questions. And guys, again, how and why are like my two go-tos. Like if I don't have my questions written out right there in front of me, I simply say, well, how did you realize that? Or why did you believe that this happened? And it always helps me. It helps me out every single time. Tip number eight is to have a target up. I am so big about having a target up in my classroom and making sure that my students understand what is it that I am expecting them to try to achieve? What is the goal that they are trying to work towards? What is it that we are doing in our classrooms? So on my whiteboard or on my chart paper, whichever one that I'm using that day, I will always have a learning target up and ready to go for my students. They will always be able to look up there and read that target and understand what is it that we are working on today? What is it that we are focusing on? So an example would have been today was I can organize my thinking in order to better understand a text. So again, they understood, oh, we're going to be organizing. What are some things that we've been organizing? Oh, we've been using road mapping. These are all things that we've been incorporating into the classroom and they're already starting to kind of pull out their schema and figure out, well, what is it that some things that we've already been talking about that attaches to the learning target that I have for today? And when your administration walks in and they're looking around the room, trying to figure out what it is it that you're doing, because typically they'll look around the room. The room will always be a huge sign of what is it that you're learning about? What are your kids doing? What are your kids doing at their, their area independently? Because that will tell your administration what it is that you are focusing on and working on as a class. And that learning target, guys, that is the most powerful piece. If you have that learning target up there and you go over that learning target with your students, you, your administration will look at that and they will know exactly where, you're, where you are. And there will be no need of, or that question of, well, what were you doing today? What was the whole lesson about? Well, if I have my learning target up there, they know exactly what I'm doing today. They know exactly what I am teaching and what my lesson revolves around. Like they kind of pick up on it really, really quick. So learning targets. If you haven't learned a lot about learning targets, please um, leave me a comment down below or give this video a thumbs up. Let me know if you wanna learn more about learning targets, about how to implement them in the classroom or how to create those learning targets. And I will definitely do a video in the near future on that. So number nine, tip number nine, don't try anything brand spanking new. Guys, again, this does not have to be a hoot nanny, okay? You are not trying to put on some type of dog and pony show for your administration if you do know the day that they are coming in. Don't do that. Be who you are. Be the teacher that you are because you can't better yourself if you're always trying to put on a show for someone else. So be the teacher that you are. Show them who you are. And then if you have to learn something from it, then learn something from it. We can't grow as teachers if we don't learn from it. But 
don't try something new. Don't say, oh, administration's coming in. Okay, I have to just, I'm gonna do this new stuff because let me tell you what's gonna happen. As soon as you go to start doing all that new stuff, your kids are gonna be like, but what is that? I don't understand. What are we doing? And you don't want that to happen. Guys, if you know that they're coming, stick to something that is already in their routine and they're already working on and just progress from that. It's gonna be okay. They're not expecting you to have a dog and pony show. They're not expecting you to do front flips in your classroom. They're expecting you to, they want to see good teaching. They wanna see that you're using the strategies that you have learned and you're applying them in the classroom and that your kids are engaged and that they're learning from one another. That is what they want to see. So don't try anything new. Don't go out there and say, oh, I'm going to do this new game. Don't do that. Stick to the things that you are already doing because I guarantee you, your kids are going to make, let it be known that you're doing something new and your administration is going to be like, well, why did you do this? You know, don't do that to yourself. All right, so the last tip that I have for you is tip number 10, and is always have a backup plan, <laughs> especially if you are working with technology, because let me tell you, technology will fail every single time in case like if something really big is happening and really important, it will end up failing. When your principal comes into the classroom, they wanna be able to see that you can adapt to your lesson, that in case something does happen, are you prepared? Are you able to adapt to that lesson? Are you able to adapt to the problem or the change that is happening within your lesson and can you just pick up from that so if you're using technology always have a backup um, so typically what I will do is like because my kids are on one-to-one -one and they do have one-to-one -one iPads I will always have it copied I will always have a copy there because there are always some of those kids who don't want to use the iPads that they want to use it on paper and I give them that option I give them that choice to be able to do that so if you're using some sort of technology, always have a backup. If you're using it from a book or if you're using it from something that you have a picture, be sure to make those copies, have them ready to go just in case so that your principal or administration can see that you adapt well um, and when you're under pressure into um, a change that has happened during your lesson. That is extremely impressive to your administration. Those are my 10 tips for what are some things that you can do when observation time rolls around and really these are just 10 tips for good teaching these are things that you can be applying into your classroom right now to improve yourself as an educator and really kind of show yourself you want to sparkle and shine so i hope that you were able to get some really good valuable information from this um, i want you to be thinking about one of these that you're going to try to implement right away that you are not already doing um, so leave that down below let me know what is one thing that you really want to try and then i want you to come back later on and see if you can tell me how is it going in your classroom so one thing that you really want to try or if you have another really great tip that you wanna share about observations, be sure to leave those down below in the comments. I absolutely love every single one of you guys. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and watching my videos, and I will talk to you all very, very soon.